Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, heard Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on PSA.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts, Tom Zappala and John Mallory. And our headlines tonight is that JM is still in the Witness Protection Program. <laughs> as, as we can see, he is, uh, David, he's at Pots Unknown. Notice, just, uh, just call me Henry Hill. Notice, notice that he's in a, in a very stock room, right? Yes. No, right? nothing, no, no kind of nothing. There's no, <laughs> nothing on the wall, nothing that's going to tip him off, tip us off as to no, where he is. Nothing. You're right. I mean, I'm very impressed with that, Jam. So, uh, when are you out I like of there? The lighting in here, though, the lighting is pretty good. When, uh, so, like when you <clears throat> when you put those people, those prisoners, on the rack, uh, <laughs> like, do you participate in that, or you just watch? I'm like the uh, the guard on Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> You know, I bring them in. They yelling fresh fish. Oh, that's it's sad. It really is. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm in an undisclosed location, just uh, awaiting the arraignment. There you go. <laughs> the name of the show is the Great American Collectible Show. Tom Zappel, my co-host and partner, uh, JM John Mallory is. Uh, Good to see you, buddy. Uh, yeah, you look great. Uh, listen, we have a great show today. We're going to bring in in a minute. Uh, we're going to bring in our good friend Jordan Gilroy from. Leland's, and then the late great, oh, he's not the late, the great Joe Tomasulo, <laughs> uh, a dear friend of ours. And, you know, I hate when they pay him compliments, but he got some compliments paid to him at the Boston show. And it was like I shook my head. These people love him. And then later on, uh, we're going to bring in for a few minutes our good friend Al Cristofoli from Love of the Game Auctions celebrating their 10th anniversary. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and share the show with your friends. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, any, anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Uh, if you have a comment, you have a question, you can email me at zapsenior, Z-A-P-S-R, at hotmail.com, or you can make a comment, and we will get back to you. Uh, if you have any complaints about JM or Rico, just let me know, and <laughs> we'll take care of that end of it. But let's bring in right now a good friend, nice kid. Just he, he's one of this kid is one of the class acts. You really are, Jordan. I mean, yes. there's no like there's no controversy. You do your job. You're very good at it. Jordan Gilroy from Leland. How are you, kiddo? Good. How are you? Good, Jordan. What's with the collar? Like you know, buttoned at the top there. Is that the like? He, is dressed, that, he, he dressed for the show. Yeah. That's no, that's the, a yeah. that's a that's show. a Gen Z look. That's definitely a yeah. Gen Z look, right? <laughs> It would have been better if he had. It would have been better if he had a tie with it. No, he should have it unbuttoned with some gold chains. That's the look that we want. <laughs> Can't expose the chest there too early. <laughs> uh, anyways, a clip-on clip tie. A clip-on tie. There you go. Hey, Jordan, uh, you guys have a, uh, a, a a kind of a fun auction starting this coming Sunday. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, it's actually more memorabilia heavy than you know the last couple of years of modern cards. You know, we're making that, you know, smooth transition because that stuff is on fire and more people are looking to sell that than cards right now. Well, modern cards, at least. Yep. Um, so we got a little bit of everything, but we have some cool media pieces like this Mickey Mantle letter that I can't really say because <laughs> it's not safe for work. But it's uh, it's something that a lot of people will recognize. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, see, now that's called a tease. Uh, what, <laughs> it is called, yeah. <laughs> what about, uh, can, you, can you talk about some of the other memorabilia that uh, we will be uh, showcasing? Sure. Yeah, a lot of game used bats, game used jerseys, um, one of Mickey Mantle's game used helmets, uh, me and Joe Green game worn jersey. Um, I mean, a little bit of everything. We have a uh, uncut sheet from Brady's championship ticket, the contenders one. Not signed, but it's the only one that we know of. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, tons of Babe Ruth autographs. Like I said before, a game used bats of players like a, a rookie Jeter bat, Harmon Killebrew home run bat, Thurman Munson PSA 10 bat. Oh, very cool. I mean, cool. the list goes on and on. So it's, it's going to be, you know, a great variety of stuff. 
Hey, Jordan, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Jeter. I had it actually down to ask you about Derek Jeter. Um, you know, we had the, the Jeter documentary, probably not as groundbreaking as The Last Dance. But I think Jeter's, you know, his his legend, I think, has kind of come back a little bit now. People are, are talking about him more. They're looking at him more. He certainly, to me, is you can make definitely make the case for top five shortstop of all time when you take hitting into into account I agree where is jeter in the hobby now what do you think of him in terms of the business and his popularity with collectors um well he's being more public now and he came out with the he company is. he did like a collaboration and yep. you know he signed autographs there and that's something that he wouldn't normally do so he's more i guess in the public light and in our light not just in you know baseball but in collecting which is interesting to see because this is a guy that somehow stayed private in New York city for all those years and really didn't have any controversy, but now he's kind of coming out of the limelight and stepping into collectibles, which is fun for us. Maybe there's a chance for us to meet him at some point, And that's something that never would have happened before, but his value, I mean, he's still alive. So he's still signing autographs. So supply right. is still going up, but people still love him. I mean, not just Yankee fans. It's, all of baseball, really. You know, you're making. He was, he was one of those guys, Zap. That uh, sorry to interrupt you, but that even like you couldn't. That even him and almost that whole Yankee team of those late '90s. Yeah, like, that, it was hard. They were hard to hate. I was going to say like, the same like, thing. You could hate Reggie Jackson. Exactly. You I was. Know, yeah. You could hate those '70s teams, but it was hard to hate. I Paul mean, O'Neill and it, Stop I, Rose I, to, couldn't crew, couldn't right? agree with you more, uh, JM. As a matter of fact, yeah. I, I always said that uh, in my heart. Uh, Derek Jeter uh, belonged in a Red Sox uniform. You know, I just, he was that kind of a player, uh, just accommodating a good good guy, nice guy. And by the way, uh, I don't know if you've seen the uh, PSA magazine. That's a great shot. Have you seen it, uh, Jordan, the new PSA with uh, Jeter on the cover? It's really kind of a black oh, yeah. and white, very, very cool uh, photo. Uh, Jack and, and the guys at the PSA did a nice job. Uh, by the way, before we let you go, uh, Jordan, I'm going to ask Joe T the same question. Was that a hell of a sandwich that we brought you guys or what? (laughs) I mean, based on a one to 10, come on, let's hear a little something here. A little love here. Uh, I mean, 9.9. 9.9. Uh, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. I'm going to ask I Thomas. I don't want to say 10 because that sounds basic, but 9.9. <laughs> I'm going to ask Thomas Sewell the same question. That came from the best Italian deli on the north shore of Boston. Yeah. Right, JM? Uh, Burrell, it's as, and, and it's as good as any you'll find in Boston as well. Absolutely. But absolutely the best north of Boston, there's no doubt. Well, listen, so when does the, uh, when does the auction start and when does it end? Opens this Sunday and closes December tenth. All right, so you've got a you've got a nice it's a nice long stretch to get your bids in. Uh, some great stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Every you know I, I get outbid a lot. I don't know what the hell I'm, I'm doing wrong, <laughs> but I do. I get outbid. I bid on a lot of auctions and I get wiped out. I get wiped out. <laughs> Just put a max bid of a million dollars. Well, I, I think my my wife, you see, Ellen says she yeah. thinks I'm cheap, uh, but I don't think I am. But maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Jordan, say hi to have for us. Will do. Thank Take you. care, Jordan Gilroy from Leland's. Hey, before we bring in Mr. Thomas Sewell, let's talk about our friend Joe Drellick and the Philly Show. East Coast Sports Marketing and Hunt Auctions are pleased to present the Philadelphia Sports Collectors Show. The Philly Show, from Friday, December 2nd to Sunday, December 4th, held at their new location, the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center. Uh, in uh, at what The address actually is uh, Hall A 100 Station Avenue in Oaks Park, Pennsylvania. Shop over 250 of your favorite hobby dealer boots on over 75,000 square feet of sports collectible heaven from the 1800s to the present day. Major sports auction houses and third-party grading and authentication companies are on hand to assist your collecting needs. The Philly Show is family-friendly, and all kids 12 and under get in for free. Autographed guests include our old Red Sox buddy, Wade Boggs, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Hall of Famer, Philadelphia Eagles greats Brandon Graham, Keith Byers, Seth Joyner, and many more. For more information, go to thephillyshow.com. That's the Philly Show since 1975, where it all started. 
All right, let's bring in our pal. Joe, can you move your head to the left a little bit? Thank you. There you go, right there. Now you're good. Now you're good. Can you hear us all right? Fine, fine China there. He no, wants Tom, to see you got me thinking about that sand. All right, so now I'm oh, going to ask oh, I'm going to ask you the question, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> so, Joe, all right, if you had to grade it, let's take that sandwich and let's put it in a PSA holder. How are you going to grade it? Uh, we all see. <laughs> what? <laughs> all the meat, all the Italian meat was shifted to the right. So I'm giving it an off center. But no. you- <laughs> Tom, all kidding, aside, all kidding aside, Tom, it's a nine. It's a solid nine. It's, it's a good sub. It's a good sandwich, man. A little prosciutto. It's one of the best. It's one of the best Italian subs I've had. That's what we Growing wanted. up in Brooklyn, Tom, in Bensonhurst, we had a deli. Johnny Franco used to go here all the time. Yeah. We had a deli called John's. John's Deli. And your hero was thick. John's Italian hero was twice as thick as the one you bought. Wow. It, it was. That's probably why they eventually went out of business. JM, we're going to have to talk to Donnie Smriglio hey, about that. The thing is, Zap, like you, you bring stuff like that to these New York guys. It, it's always better in New York. Right? Everything's <laughs> got to be better in New York. No, right? jo- John, <laughs> seriously, it, it's one of the best. It's one of the best Italian heroes I've. I worked uh, when I worked in the, one of the mayor's office here in Methuen. We had a uh, his chief of staff was Jewish, so we were talking about Ryan Deli. You know, on the way down to Connecticut on eighty four there. Everyone loves Ryan Deli. You know, it's good. And she's like, come on. I grew up next to Max's Delicatessen in New York. Uh, like, come on, Ryan. Everything's better. Yeah, I, I get that all the time from my Florida <laughs> friends. You know, I talk about Regina Pizza in the North End. Well, it doesn't compare to some of the pizza joints on Arthur Avenue. Come on. There is no pizza or Chinese food in Florida. Let's just That's get that That's a good point. Very right. good point. All right, listen, Joe, we got a lot to talk about. You guys, yes, you, you have yes. a... Uh, auction that's going on right now and then you have another a winter auction that's going to be a blockbuster um the auction that you go that you have there's 177 lots i know that you have 15 high grade mantles can you talk about those and did those all come from the same consigner yes they did tom so we have 14 nines and the 53 tops is a psa eight and a half Obviously, the big focus will be on the Mantle Rookie. PSA 9 Mantle Rookie, well-centered, wow. well-deserving of the 9. It's almost like if they had half PSA did a 9.5, you could argue it's a 9.5. What's that? What's, what's, your, what's your prediction on that card, Joe? I think it's going to fall somewhere between 3 and $4 million. Wow. wow. It, nice. I mean, we've been open – a little short of three days, and it's already at uh, $1.4 million. Wow. Wow. Joe, and I, did you correct? You sent us some notes. You have 9, 33 Gaudis. You have 41 Hall of Fame 33 Gaudis that you're showcasing. Yes. Can you talk about some of those a little bit? Sure. Um, obviously, the most ex- – well – you can argue between the roots and the Lajaway, but we have the number 106 Lajaway. Yeah, that's a... That was printed, you know, that was held back because the theory is they wanted kids to keep on buying packs because they were never going to finish the pack. Everybody and his mother's looking for that card, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're out there, Tom, but not many nine. I know. We I... have a PSA nine. The other 40 uh, Hall of Famers are all eight including all four roots and a Lugella. Crazy. Wow. Joe, oh. um, I want to ask you about, you have the 33 DeLong set, and you guys are, are you're marketing it that you're either going to sell it as a complete set or break it up. Can you explain how that all works? And you're going to have to move your hands because you're muffling the microphone. Thank you. Sure, Tate. So, Tom, this is a concept that many auction houses use. Um, obviously it needs the approval of the consigner. And what you do is you offer each. So a DeLong is 24 cards, yep. 24 subjects, DeLong set. 
you offer the 24 cards individually, separate lots, and you offer the 24 cards as a complete set. So the way it sells is the highest number, the aggregate of the 24 cards, yeah. individual cards versus the set. Typically, the aggregate of the individual card wins the shot. Really? So, you know, I, I've seen it work the other way, but more than not, the individual cards wind up. No kidding. I, I, have, a, I have a question for you, Joe. Um, and I've had a chance now, both at shows and, and in my own life, to see up close some of these 33 uh, Gaudi cards. And I have to say, I'm amazed at the, I guess for lack of a better word, that the durability of these cards. Now, obviously, you're going to find some that are crumpled and wrinkled, but I mean, some of these cards are in, to the eye, what we would say to the eye, mint condition. Now, PS, they're not PSA mint condition, but even if they're PSA right. 6 or 7, I mean, I know you don't know how they made so the I'm, cards back then, but I, mean, John, I, I was so surprised at how good they look over that period of time. And the perfect term, John, if you want to describe them, you're right. They look perfect. They're not Act fresh. One okay. of my favorite times. Okay, but seriously, if you you know, if you thumb through the catalog, all these cards look like they just came out of a pack. And Joe, it's a cra- it's amazing, Lana. And these aren't cards that a lot of these cards were the, the typical, they've been in a cigar box in an attic for 50 years or something like that. I'm not talking to people that, that you know maintained them. I mean, even the ones that are just found, it's amazing how good they look to the eye. It is. I mean, I think the most amazing looking cards ever, John, from your perspective, were the E98 Black Swamp cards. Okay. Of that, you know, what was that, five, six years ago? Yeah, probably. That black, right, that Black Swamp line. I mean, those cards. I mean, all the borders. Yeah, those, were things, like, were, those things were special. No white, wow. white pump, yeah. laser sharp, perimeters. Yeah, those were special. I mean. Those were really special. Joe, what is what is the mystique, I mean, behind the 33 Gaudi set? Listen, I know you've got the T206 set. You've got the 52 tops. But, you know, the, the conversation is T206, 52 tops, 33 Gaudi. That's always been the conversation. What is the mystique behind the 33 Gaudi set? Is it because of the Ruth and Garrix, or is it just the, 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 the beauty of the set? Oh, you know, Tom, think of it. Before the Gowdies, we had all these tobacco type issues. Yeah. T cards. And then you had E cards, all these candy related issues. The mainstream Gowdy 33 set is a landmark bubblegum set. I mean, that like is one of the first cards that, you know, you kids would run to the that mom and pop local stores yep. count their pennies. And you know what? Half of them wanted the gum as much as they wanted the cards. That's funny. And right. And it, it true. The Gowdy set is the Mona Lisa. It is the Holy Grail of pre World War II gum set. Then obviously you got the post World War II 52 times. Gotcha. Joe, I think that I think Sap mentioned just briefly the, the 34 Gaudi set break. We have 39 PSA nines, a PSA nine Greenberg rookie, PSA eight number 37 Garrick, PSA 8.5 number 61 Garrick. This is the 34 Gaudi set. So pick it up on Zap's question. A lot of similar players from 33 to 34. Good question. Why, John. why is 34 not as lovable we'll say, sought, sought after or legendary as 33? Good right, question. Zap? It's a great question with the simplest answer. Who was the king of baseball, John? Babe at Ruth. that time, no Babe Ruth. Oh, and okay. There no you go. Babe Ruth. All right. Yeah, that there is you go. I'm well, not going to say go. it. It doesn't kill the set. I mean, the set has two Garricks. It's got Jimmy Fox. Like yeah. Rose. It's got a lot of great Hall of Famers, but no Babe Ruth. Joe, and, hold, hold on, Joe. Before we let you, before we take a break, why is there no Babe Ruth in that in that collection? There's a lot of 
like un, unres, unresolved issues with that, Tom, not true resolution, but they feel it was some type of contractual. Yeah, issue. probably a money thing. Yeah, probably yeah. money thing. You know, like with Eddie Plank and Harness Wag. Right, 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 right. And then even in the 50s, Tom, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. Why is there no 54? Uh, Tops, Mickey Mantle. Good question. There must have been a contractual good issue point. Very good between point. Tops and Bowman, where Bowman secured the rights to Mantle. All right, we are chatting with Joe Tomasula from Memory Lane Auction. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Joe, we're going to talk about the next auction, but I want to talk about some of the things that you and I speak about off camera about the modern what's going on in the modern world, what's going on with fractional buying, just uh, some of those little tidbits. I want to get your opinion. Hang in there. We'll be right back. 96, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game use bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Okay, we are back and chatting with our good paisan, Joe Tomasula from Memory Lane Auctions. Joe, what's happening to fractional buying? Seems to be dumping. Is it yes or no? I don't think it's dumping. I think the items that are being sold, the typical standard items, are dumping. It's no secret, Tom, that modern, a lot of the fractionalization, 
has focused on modern. Right. And modern is taking a hit right now. It's coming down I mean, to earth, Joe. I mean, it's coming back right, to right. earth. It was, it, was, it was at such a stratospheric level. And like you said, it's kind of flatlining, settling in. And, you know, maybe the numbers, the valuations that are being sought after are a tad high. And they have to kind of come down, normalize. I'll tell you this, Tom. Whether it's fractionalization, auction, private sales, rare, great vintage, Ruth, Mantle, Garrett, Cobb, Jackson, Joe Jackson. It's just name all these great stars from yesteryear. They are pulling the numbers, Tom. They are not dropping in value. Right. They are either staying where they are or going up. So, we, Joe, I've, I've asked you this question before. I've asked you this question. So, with that being said, and the fact now that a lot of these collectors and investors that invested in the modern and ultra-modern cards are coming back to Earth, do you think any of them are gravitating towards vintage? Slowly, yes. It's a, it's a large transition. It is. Um, I think there were people that did both. And those... People that were, you know, kind of, you know, dabbling with the modern, the vintage. I'm sure they're starting to lean heavily towards vintage now. You know, towards, you know, the older pre-war stuff. Um, again, modern stuff is great. I, it's manufactured rarity. Correct. Versus real rarity. Right. But... It's still wet. You know what's interesting? Last week, we had Alex Yam from PSA on. Alex is the resident basketball guru at PSA. Nothing he doesn't know about the NBA basketball cards. Brilliant kid. And we were talking about it, and he, he made the same comment. He said, you know, he's, he, basically, it's, it's coming down to earth. We, we was talking about investing in, in, in basketball, modern basketball cards. It's coming down to earth, and he was actually advising these young modern collectors and investors to kind of stick their toe in the water on the vintage stuff so that you get to understand what it's all about. It's like a blue chip stock. And, you know, I'm talking about, you know, the guys like Russell and Chamberlain and Oscar Robinson and, and, and those guys. So it's, uh, <laughs> I hope it does take, take root uh, for some of these youngsters. And don't you think, guys, though, that part of that is some of these young investors, they're not they, – they know the modern game. That's why I think they're investing in Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And it's also of futures course. also. But they're not stupid, and I think they're also realizing – and we've seen it. We've talked about it, Zap, on the show. You know, Tatis Jr., okay, he misses a full season now because of a suspension. Zion Williamson with his injury problems. Yep. I think they're starting to realize that this might not be the big – you know, you're going to pay – whatever, six, you know, let's say five, six figures for a card for a guy that could be out of the league next year, they're realizing that the sound investment is a guy whose stats are never going to change because he's not playing anymore. Jay Abdo, let me ask you this question because you're, you're from that generation where in the 90s you love those players. Um, yeah. you, you just made a comment that the young investors slash collectors, they're, they're – you know they're buying up the uh, the Jalen Browns uh, or the uh, uh, Marant cards because they're watching them today. But when when I started and when Joe started and even you to some extent, I never saw Babe Ruth play. I never saw Ty Cobb yeah. play. I never saw yeah. Nap Lajoie play. But I was always uh, you know I, I was attracted to those players that time period and those cards. That doesn't seem to be the case today. No, it doesn't. Joe, you can get yeah, speak to that, Joe. Yeah. Um, before I wanted to jump in and say one other thing regarding sure. the the modern market. I always told you guys this. If you're gonna spend a half a million dollars on Zion Williamson or Tatis or six figures plus, you are a bad newspaper headline away. <laughs> From disaster. That's right. right. You're right. I, I mean, yeah. it it's scary. 
Well, I mean, and it's literally like buying Apple or Microsoft. You're playing the market. Babe Ruth, it's not going to come out that Babe Ruth was taking PEDs in right. 1931. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, Tom Brady, he's pretty much a sure thing. Michael Jordan's a sure thing. Yeah. But, so look at Jordan. Look what happened with his flair rookie card. Yeah, good point. PSA, and I always felt they should have, makes a decision to start encapsulating the 84 stock. Now, PSA rules the market. So now PSA recognizes the 84 star as Jordan's rookie. Right. Good point. His true Joe. rookie. Uh. Now, what does that say for the 86 flair? Right. Where, where it leaves it. I mean, it's a, I think PWCC just branded it the second most popular card in the hobby behind the 52 tops mantle. I don't yeah. know what that means. Nah, I don't buy say. that. I don't buy that. Yeah, but you know what, Joe? Joe makes a great he makes a great point here, Zap, too. In that, um, yeah, it's not going to come out that um, Babe Ruth took PEDs. But you know what? Even back then, when Babe Ruth was doing whatever he was doing, or Ty Cobb was doing whatever he was doing, it wasn't coming out at all because the media was different back. Well, then. that's true. The that's media wasn't point. seeking to tear down athletes. It is now. Everyone wants that story, so it was kind of hidden. They were they were folk here. All, all the you more know, reason, now. But, yeah. but so JM, all the more reason to be real careful what you're no investing doubt. in on the modern no market. You got to be careful, yeah. Joe. I want to I want to uh, switch gears a little bit. You have a blockbuster auction coming up uh, in December, from yeah. December to January. The first lot. I need to talk to you about the first lot. That is the. I was reading about that. That is the holy grail of baseball publications. of publications in the world. It's the 1903 yeah. Game 1 fully scored World Series program. Now, in another auction, I bid on that on that program and I got annihilated. <laughs> annihilated. Well, Tom, you have good taste. What can I tell you? <laughs> so, I, my backup. You know what my backup was? Actually, my backup I won from you guys, and that was the uh, the rest of the other 120 programs. That uh, great, great collection. I love. You know what I was just telling David. You know what I I started doing? I've 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 pulled them out one at a time. Not not all of them, but I'm talking about. I'm starting from the 1901 program, and I'm going to go to about 1930. And then there's some other ones after that. I'm documenting every single game. Uh, I, I'm writing a narrative. So in other words, the 1901 game, that was uh, Cy Young pitching against, I can't remember his name, Cy Young lost. Talk about the, uh, 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 the, the attendance, who got the most hits, who, the, you know, the box scores and all that. And I'm, that, That's really cool. And I'm putting it with the program. So it's, it is kind of cool. Here's my question. This is from a selfish perspective. So I'm paying attention to the attendance at the game. So, for instance, this game, this 1901 game that I documented, the one, the first one that I have, it's the Boston Americans against the uh, – I, th- I can't even remember who it was uh, – Chicago, against the, the Chicago White Stockings. There were only 4,000 people at that game. So my question is, are the odds pretty good that that particular 1901 program may be only one of 10 or 15 or one of one? I mean, uh, what are the ch- odds of it being extremely rare because there were only 4,000 people at the game and how many people kept the program? It is extremely rare, right. Tom. And right. You're probably not going to have more than five to 10 of those in existence. I mean, realistically, you could have the only one. How can I document yeah. that? <laughs> do what the Census Bureau does. Go door to door, <laughs> ring every bell, and ask someone if they have a 1901 Cy Young program. All right, so what is that program? What are you going to start the bidding at on that program? The 1903 Game 1 World Series, the first World Series game. Yeah. What are you going to start the yeah. bidding at? Deacon Felipe beat Cy Young 7-3. 
25,000, Tom. That's, that'll be, it, it, will that be a six figure or a high five? It should go six figures right there. Wow. Yes. Yeah, because I, I, I was reading about that particular publication years ago, and somebody sold it years ago for like 15000 or something like that. I mean, that was a long time yeah. ago. It sold uh, like last year by, I believe, 110000 That was the one I bid on. <laughs> <laughs> except except <laughs> Ellen gave me a not to exceed 15000 <laughs> So <laughs> I got shot out pretty good. Uh, Joe, you also have a, a single sign root ball. Uh, it says 1946-47, U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Paul McNutt. So is this... Tell us about that ball. How did you guys get your hands on that bad boy? Um, a, a, I always told you, Tom, a phone call away. You know, just a call to memory lane. Um, yep, Truman appointed McNutt ambassador in 1946-47. The thing that I, to the Philippines, the thing that I find really interesting, and this is what I love, even more than having a Beckett or a PSA or a JSA LOA, that root signature is spot on for the 46, 47 period, like his style signature. Sure. Which makes it even cooler in the fact that McNutt was the ambassador to the Philippines in 46 and 47. I love those little tie the knot pegs. Right. You know? That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey Joe, I know we're gonna we're up coming up on the break. No, we're good. We're I, good. Was, I was gonna lead into that one actually, Zap, that particular signed root ball, because we've talked a lot on the show when I've been on the last few weeks and with some of our guests about signed items. And I feel that signed items, which once were kind of verboten in the in the hobby, now people are looking for that. Can you can you speak to that, Joe, and the popularity of autographed items, even cards? Used to be yeah. oh, your card was signed, forget it. But how do you feel about that? Yeah, John, real quick, Tom Siever was my idol. And yeah. I can remember as what, late teens, I, and I met Siever so many times, spoke to Tom so many times, and he refused to sign his rookie card. Because at that time, he just said, he goes, you realize I'm destroying the value yeah, right. of the card. Right. Boy, has that turned. <laughs> That's amazing, Joe. It really is. It's. I, I mean, signed cards, to me, is like one of the top two or three collecting angles in the hobby with huge legs. Wow. Incredible investment potential. Joe, wow. um, it does. What I love is the guy held the card. Exactly. So That's right. I have a couple of signed Babe Ruth three. I have three signed Babe Ruth cards. Babe Ruth. Held those cards, right, Joe? What amazing. about what about? Is there more value? Like, let's let's take a fifty-two mantle tops mantle rookie card. Is there a difference between mantle signing that card in fifty-two or fifty-three in ink versus mantle signing that same signing that card in sixty-four in in a in a flare? A hundred percent. As long as the ink signature, the ballpoint, yeah, looks nice. If you get a legible like PSA eight or nine, really nice bold ink signature, period, uh, it'll totally outdistance the value of one signed in Sharpie. I don't, Tom, and it's funny you brought up fifty two. To the best of my knowledge. I don't know if a 52 mantle signed card with a 52, 53 signature exists. I, if it does, it's escaped me. How about, a 50, I, how about a 53 mantle with a 53 or 54 signature? Yes. We sold the 53 in memory lane a few years ago. It was actually my friend Rich's card. He consigned it to us with a 53 signature. The problem, Tom, this, the card was really nice, mid-grade. In fact, it's the highest graded. It's a five and a half. But the signature was like a three or a four. Oh, was it really? It was really light. So it didn't perform the way it should. 
guys, I go back to basics all the time. The eyes, aesthetics, eye appeal rules, first and foremost. You know, then if you have the good eye appeal and you have the vintage signature, the nice card, start counting your money. <laughs> You're going to clean up. Good to know, Joe. But don't ever under... My best advice to people, don't buy things with an asterisk. Don't buy an item where you're going to have to explain yeah, to the next yeah. person you sell it to, right. well, it looks like this, but always buy great eye appeal pieces. Very, very, very interesting. We're chatting with uh, Joe T., Joe Tomasulo from a Memory Lane Auction. Joe, let's talk about a little non-sports item that you guys have in this upcoming auction that... The movie always intrigued me uh, when it came out, but this is prior to that, and that is the uh, uh, Mars, Mars Attack. Attack. Tell us about the Mars Attack wax packs that you have. Oh, my God, Tom. That was a summer find northeast. I'm not going to pinpoint the state or whatever, but that was a northeast summer find from, a, from a, like a shoebox collection. There was only one PSA graded before that. A PSA 4, this thing was like in mint condition. It got a PSA 8. Now, you have to remember, the 62 Mars attacks cards were very popular. Ever since uh, the 53 famous movie, War of the World. Yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of planted a seed in Americans' heads about an invasion from Mars. Are there aliens? You know. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And interestingly enough, guys, the original artwork for 14 of the 55 Mars attacks cards had to be squashed because it was grotesque. Like they had pets, dogs burning in flames. Oh, God. Right, <laughs> like stuff like that. And Jeez. parents, school teachers, kids love it. I mean, kids absolutely love it. But it got a lot of pushback from society, so they had to kind of touch up some of the original uh, artwork and replace wow. some of the cards. But that's a beast, guys. That is a major find, and that 25000 opening bid, that's another piece that can go six figures. Wow. Joe, tickets are another item that I think are, are rising in popularity and in value in uh, sports collectible auctions. And and you have some uh, an historical debut tickets, Tiger Woods, Pele, Tom Brady. Can you talk about those a little bit? Right. And Tom, uh, John, most important, and I left them off my original list uh, that I followed up with with Tom, we have a Michael Jordan debut. Oh, wow. Now, the Jordan debut is a stop. A full Jordan debut went for over 450000 last wow. year. Wow. Uh, or earlier this year. That's unbelievable. But a, but a stub has gone for up to 99000 No kidding. Crazy. Wow. We got all these Brady full ticket. Now, obviously, the modern tickets, you get more fulls versus stubs. Right. So we got Brady's first game, Thanksgiving Day against the Lions. You know, the Patriots took an, a very, like, rare ass kicking. They lost like 34, <laughs> three or seven. But Brady came in in the third or fourth quarter. Yeah. He completed his first pass, then threw two incompletions. That was his first game. Then we have his first start. We have his first win. We have Tiger Woods' first pro debut ticket. Um, wow. His first PGA Tour, which I think was the Milwaukee Open where I think he didn't make the cut after a round or two, but these are all historic tickets. Wow. Very cool. Um, and tickets have a lot of legs, too. I'm going to yeah, put tickets alongside autograph cards, unique autograph items. Yeah. Great investment potential. We have about a minute and a half left, Joe. So let's talk about you got, you got a current auction going now that ends December 3rd in about a week, week and no. a half. Oh, the one, yeah. The current one. That's going on. Ends, and then the other one starts on December 10th, ends on January 7th. 
I am really excited to see the items in that. Uh, you guys have had some amazing pieces of memorabilia and cards this year. You guys have been on a roll. You really have. We are, Tom. And we've never piggybacked one auction after another like this. But that high-end collection going on now, Gowdy's mantles, the longs, that, you know, that just kind of dropped in our lap. And uh, we just snuck it in. And it's going to do really well. Um, Tom, I know you love autographed items. It's such a hot collecting uh, niche now in the hobby. We have a horde of great Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Lou Gehrig signed like heirlooms, collectibles in this auction. There's something for everybody. Well, you know, Joe, I'm really happy with uh, a good friend of mine who I happen to be talking to helped me with a uh, Mickey Mantle sign card. Uh, there you go. And that's, uh, <laughs> I think Just it was, remember me and you remember me. What year was that? Was that a 53 or a 54? I don't remember. That a 53. Card. It was a 53 signed uh, Mantle card. Yes. Uh, with the ballpoint signature. Ballpoint signature. With, Joe, with the name. Yes, it was in, in ink, and I, that's that's in my safe, and I love it. And every once in a while, I take it out and I look at it, and I kiss it, and I put it back in. So, pretty much. <laughs> when are you going to take out the green cob? Uh, the green cob is uh, is going to stay for a while. That's going to the grandkids. That's going to because you know that green cob. <laughs> okay. uh, well, the the story behind that was that is the first. That's the first T two o second T two o six card I ever bought. You know how much I paid for that card, Joe? Did I ever tell you? What, tell me what year you bought it. 1992. Oh, my God. 500 bucks? 450 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I paid $450 for that card. And John, that's called cool. theft without a gun. No doubt. <laughs> All right, Joseph. We love you. Say hi to the gang. All right. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, Take Joe. Take care. Joe oh, Tomasulo. Joe, by the way, Joe, I still... This is my show cup. So there you go. You. <laughs> Joe Thomas Sula, <laughs> Memory Lane Auctions. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you're a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport. Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field, and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer, because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. 
present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned, the highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become Another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. They are prized possessions, and you need a place to store them that is safe and secure. The eBay Vault is exactly that. An insured, climate-controlled facility with state-of-the-art security that guards your valuable collection around the clock. Your vault account is protected by two-step verification and easily accessible through eBay Collection. And everything stored in the eBay Vault is backed by Authenticity Guarantee. Buying and selling is a seamless experience. When you buy an eligible card on eBay, it can be sent directly to the eBay vault at checkout. Or, if it's already in the eBay vault, you can just keep it there. And selling from the eBay vault is just as easy. Every card in the vault has been expertly inspected, detailed, and photographed, so you can quickly sell it with a pre-populated listing. And if your buyer chooses to withdraw their card from the eBay vault, we handle packing, shipping, and insurance. And same goes for you. If you want that rare rookie card in your hands, you can have it shipped to you at any time. Collect like a pro with the eBay vault. No, the eBay vault is climate controlled, insured, and protected with 24-hour security. Soon, you'll be able to send cards already in your collection directly to the eBay vault. They will take high-quality photos of the front and back of the card and document all the details for your viewing pleasure and to make the listing-to-sell process seamless. For more info, go to ebay.com, connecting buyers and sellers globally. Okay. Uh, Uh, We're back. Now, we're having a technical problem with Big Al Chris. Now, we can hear his melodious voice. Alfred, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. You sound... Absolutely spectacular. (laughs) Now, so what we're going to do is, through the magic of editing, uh, when the show does air, David is going to have a magnificent image of you up there so we can pretend we're talking to you and looking at you. Is that fair enough? Sure. Technically, I guess. technically, if you wanted to go by Inception, the picture is actually already there. Oh, that's a very good point. I never <laughs> thought of that. Or yeah. the thing is, Love the thing is, you could have said nothing. And <laughs> well, that that I, wasn't I was going to go no, with see, that. See, <laughs> I have to. I hang out our dirty laundry. That's just the way I am. But you know, I think I think we could have fixed this if we had another fifteen minutes of commercials. But, uh, <laughs> <I guess. laughs> All right, now listen. Uh, obviously, uh, congratulations. Number one. By the way, Al's going to be joining us next week, also, uh, hopefully with a camera. But uh, uh, Al, congratulations, man! Uh, ten years. I can't believe it's already been ten years. Talk, talk about talk about the journey. I mean, it's been it's been an awesome one. I I can't. You know, I was thinking 
Uh, we closed our first auction the night before Superstorm Sandy hit New Jersey, and and uh, um, we lost power for eleven days uh, yeah. from the from the storm. So so the winnings for the first auction, I packed by uh, I, I had a little portable generator and uh, and a desk lamp. And my uh, my cell phone was was uh, I had the hotspot on, and uh, it was plugged into my computer, which was being fired by the generator. And I packed everybody's winnings in the dark by <laughs> by. Uh, <laughs> and it was just it was just you and the missus, right? It was just, it was just me in the basement of my house, and, and uh, it, it was. Um, it was awesome. It was the best thing. It was just you know, I mean, it was terrifying, but but it was. Uh, uh, it was also pretty cool. It, it was you've come uh, it was, a, you've come a hell of a long way, and I got to tell you something not to not to to tout your horn, uh, uh, but I can remember it mu- must have been about less than a year after you started, or a year after you started. I was talking to Joe Orlando, and I said to him, I made a comment. He says, "You know, this this love of the game guy." He seems to be, you know, a pretty legit. You know, they, they seem to be a really passionate about the uh, the hobby. And Joe said to me, "I got to tell you something. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in this hobby." As God be my judge, Joe Orlando said that to me. So, huh? Yeah. How about that? Honestly, yeah. Well, you know, Joe was always good to us. You know, I always thought it was it was cool that he took time. You know, we're the smallest guy out there in terms of catalog auctions. And right. Joe always came by our booth at the National, took the time to sit for 15 minutes or a half hour or whatever. Uh, it was always, uh, it, we always liked Joe. So I'm, I'm glad to see him doing really well and not really glad to see him doing well with a competitor. So. <laughs> I think that I think that's I think that's part of the reason you've been around for a decade and will be around for decades more, Al, is because of the way you deal with people you know, your, your attitude, even, even the items in, in your auctions, it's very accessible. You know well, what I mean? I think your style is very accessible and it that's appeals super to the flattering. Ad- yeah, no, I, I, I really feel that way. Well, we you get know, that. We get that a lot now. I mean, you are, we get that a lot. You're, 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 how do we say this? You and there's a couple of other guys too. People, the, the, the collectors feel that they can relate to you. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, they can walk up to you, shoot the breeze. You're speaking on the same level as they are. Ask you for advice, man. That's what it's all about. But that's, I mean, that's why I'm in this. Yeah, uh, right. but uh, I mean, you know? you know, but a lot of you know, there are there are a lot of people in this uh, in this hobby that are not like that. You know what I mean? I won't mention yeah. names, but I you, mean- you got to go through their bodyguards to get to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there, <laughs> there. Th- that's a thing, but but uh, um, you know, I I just feel like um, the people part of the hobby is what makes the hobby cool, and right. and so. You know, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate to, to when people lose sight of that. I think you know the the whole the whole thing. It, it, this was always when I was growing up and when I was younger, uh, sort of a solitary thing for me. The hobby It was a thing I did by myself. Sure, and, right. and when I discovered that there was a community of people uh, who who shared information and they shared knowledge and they traded with each other and they you know to me that made the hobby a thousand times better and it's it, you know it's important to be a part of that and and uh, and I want to be a part of that I don't want to just be some guy pushing dollars around on a you know on a desk I, you, I, you've I, done a hell of a every job. one of these things is important so. I right, listen next week we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the auction but we have about a couple of minutes left here. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm looking at some of this stuff. A complete T206 set. Uh, tell us about that. You got a 1921 Ruth exhibit uh, yeah. card. You got and, uh, J- uh, JM. I don't know if you went on so, the site. Did, hold on. Did you yeah. see the 1916 Type 1 Red Sox photo? Yeah, that's a nice one. That that's has my nice fingerprints one. all over it. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's a that's a nice one with the babe in there. Oh with man, the, with the Babe Ruth, who went on to become famous as a member of the uh, New York Yankees. Oh, he did, uh, did he? I didn't <laughs> know that. I thought he was cut. I thought the Red Sox cut him. <laughs> Ruth, you say? I'm going to have to look him up. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he was pretty good. But uh, so, tell us about uh, some of these items, Al. This is some this is some blockbuster stuff that you have. You know, yeah, we yeah. deliberately went at this auction and wanted it to be a smaller auction, but with a little a little you know an auction that packed a little more of a punch 
And uh, and so we've got a lot of really special pieces. I think my favorite piece in this auction is is Happy Chandler's 1945 saw that. Uh, Commissioner of Baseball contract. Um, it was signed by 19 people. It was signed by all. It, it was actually Larry McPhail's copy. Yeah. And, and uh, so it's it's a uh, multi-page document that uh, basically laid out all the terms and conditions of his employment. And it was signed by all of the representatives from each team and from the league, as well as Happy Chandler. Now, Happy Chandler, as we know, was was instrumental in the integration of baseball it, just two years later in 1947. Yep. And so uh, here's a contract from 1945 that's got Happy Chandler and Branch Rickey both signed it. Um, so it's uh, to me, it's a really historically important document and, and uh, you know, a really critical piece uh, to to the um, to the history of baseball and to the history of American sports, it's uh, it really is a great piece. So um, we talked about that kid Ruth who ended up being pretty good. You uh-huh. have a uh, you have a, a Ruth signed photo that am I right came from his sister. What a cool story this is. This is um, uh, so a, a a fan, a super fan who was connected to the team, um, found out that Babe Ruth had a sister. And he uh, sought her out and he found her in Lakeland, Florida. And the way he found her was by reaching out to the uh, to the newspaper in Lakeland, Florida. And they ran an article. Are you Babe Ruth's sister? And she found the article and connected with the newspaper. And this guy uh, and and this uh, 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 Ruth Mobley, um, Mary Mobley, I'm sorry, um, had had a, a pen pal relationship back and forth. And she sent him a photo that Babe Ruth gave to her and signed for her and she signed the back. Uh, but what comes with this is not just the photo, but the it's an entire scrapbook with this guy's entire pursuit of, of Babe, oh, Babe Ruth's That's sister. very cool. It's really, really neat. The provenance is impeccable. And, uh, and there's all kinds of other goodies in there, too. There's a, a letter written by Red Barber. There's a letter written by Wade Hoyt. There's, it, it's just a really cool collection. Hey, Al, before we let you go, there's one other item that kind of sticks out because I've always loved the photo, the uh, Sporting Life cabinet photo of Honus Wagner. Can you tell us about that a little bit? That is just a cool, cool photo. That's a beast. It's a beast. It's a tough one from the 1902 to 1911 Sporting Life cabinet issue. Um, this one is is absolutely gorgeous, and it's graded in SGC one just because um, it's got a little notch out of the top of the of the um, the mount, uh, but it's it's in really good shape. It's beautiful, beautiful photo, and, man. And these things almost never uh, come about. And the other thing that I I, I ha- would be remiss if I didn't mention the Oscar Charleston card, uh, which is a 1923 to 24 Beacon. Uh, Cuban card of Oscar Charleston. Oscar Charleston cards never become. I was going to say that is one of the most, if not the rarest, uh, card from from that. You know, oh, the yeah. Negro League cards, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it, it is a it's very rare. rare card. The last, the last Charleston card that came up, to come up for auction sold for one hundred and thirty four thousand dollars, and and uh, it's just because they are never available. So if you're a Hall of Fame collector, you you know you can't find. Uh, Oscar Charleston cards in the public market. Uh, so this, I think this is the first one that's come up for sale in, in six or eight or 10 years or something like that. All right, pal, we love you. Congratulations on 10 years uh, in this hobby. Uh, and you don't have gray hair, you have long hair, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we look forward to talking to you next week. Remember, go to Love of the Game Auctions. Love of the Game Auctions. It's good. This is going to be a killer. This is going to be a killer. Thanks, guys. It's always good to talk to you. I'll see you next week. All righty. Take Thanks, care. Al, Al Christopher right. from Love of the Game. All right, JM, I'm glad uh, you're still in the witness protection program. You did well. Nobody broke into your cell, so you're, everything is good. And uh, we'll it's see. Almost, if- uh, can we speed this up? It's almost chow time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't they slip the food underneath the, uh, under the door? Yeah, no, I have to know. I got to give them the password. Oh, is that what it is? All right, pal. We love you. (laughs) To our viewers and listeners, thanks as always for the support. Uh, Without you guys, uh, we wouldn't be here. And with that being said, happy collecting.
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.